Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. I've got laundry done. My head's kind of cut off. My phone. There we are. I got laundry done today, and I cooked dinner tonight. I don't know how good it is, but it's cooked. And um, I want to talk to you today about it. <laughs> It'll be all right. So, um, wow. I have so much to talk to you all about since the last time I've been on here. Um, of course, I'm never on here on Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday, I went and helped with a fundraiser. And it was so good. It was um, for Unbound North Texas. It was their fundraiser for youth prevention. And uh, the speaker was so good. It was such a great experience to go and meet these people that I volunteered to help. I volunteered to help for the fundraiser. I guess I could have gotten a ticket, but I really just wanted to help. I wanted to be... Um, God told me to be the hands and feet of Jesus, so I went to do that. And uh, everyone is so nice, and I hope they did really well. They had a great turnout, and it was awesome to be there. And it's sad that, that you have to have an organization like that, but human trafficking is a multi-billion dollar industry. And I, I watched a movie this afternoon that about broke my heart for these people they get they get caught up in this in so many ways you know a lot of times it's really innocent the way that they get caught up in it and they get stuck and they can't get out but that is not what I wanted to talk to you about um, I want to talk to you about it'll be alright and the reason it'll be alright is because We've got Jesus, and Jesus promises never to leave us or forsake us. So, <clears throat> I'm going to begin in prayer. Hi, my friend Josie. How are you doing? My friend Josie is here tonight. Oh, excuse me. Um, oh, she left. She must have gotten a phone call or something. Okay. <clears throat> Let's jump into some prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do, God. We just we just praise you, God. You are creator, you are sustainer, you are our shelter in the storm, you are our protector, our provider, God. You are our refuge and you are our strength, God. God, we just pray we just praise you and we thank you, God, for creating such a beautiful creation for us. For creating for creating us, for calling us as your children. We thank you, God. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty. You are loving and kind and compassionate. And you are patient and you want none to suffer. You want none to perish, God. We just pray that you would... Um, help us as your children and we thank you for loving us we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength <clears throat> God we just pray for the lost we just cry out for the lost we just pray God that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved that their eyes and their ears and their hearts and their minds would be open to truth God only your truth, not the lies that are circulated around. So you can get to heaven anyway. That is just not true. God, Jesus is the only way. And God, we just pray for the prodigals. We pray for them to come uh, back to you, God, for you to reconcile the relationship that they once had, for them to repent, God. And we also pray for this tragedy in Florida 
this building that has collapsed on so many people, God, the missing people. God, we pray for miraculous findings of people alive. We pray for these families that are waiting, God. And we pray for the ones that have passed, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for their family and friends. For all the other people that have passed away, peace, comfort, and strength. And God, my heart is broken. My heart is broken by the things that I've seen about human trafficking this afternoon, God. The speaker that I heard on Thursday, she broke my heart too, God. Just how how she got trapped in in that situation, God, and could not get out. God, I just pray for the people that are trapped today, God, that there would be a way out. God, I pray for the rescuers that might go and rescue them, that you would keep them safe. And God, I pray for all these lawbreakers, God, these people that think they are above your law, God, of how we treat each other, how we're to love each other. God, I pray. I pray for justice for these innocent people, God. And pray for justice to be served. I pray for these people to go to jail for a very long time to know what it's like to not have freedom. God, I just pray that you would just help me to say what you want me to say about whatever you want me to say. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm doing good too. Um, I uh, got some laundry done today, which is great. I even got it put up, which is even better. And so I wanted to start off with the song that I shared this morning called Be Alright. It's such a good song. It's by Danny Gokey and two other guys that I don't know, but they're really good. And a lot of it is in Spanish, a lot of it is in English, and it's just, it has the most wonderful lyrics, the most peaceful lyrics if you're going through something. So I love this song and message of peace. I love the lyrics and my brothers in Jesus singing this song in English and Spanish. How beautiful is this song? It is so beautiful. Everything may or may not feel like everything is going to be all right, but it is. So hold to the hand of Jesus. God has the whole world in his hands. I know we all go through hard times. We find ourselves in the valley at times, but we are never alone. Jesus is with us in the valley, every step up the mountain before us and on the mountaintop too. He will never leave us nor forsake us. That is his promise to us. Trust in him today. If Jesus is not your savior, call upon his name now and be saved. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. People, time is short. It is so short. We don't have years and years and years. People that are unsaved do not have years and years to find Jesus. They need to find him now. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Come just as you are. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son that came to save the world through his death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. Isaiah 43, 18-19. Leave the old, receive the new. Okay, so I know I haven't been on here a lot lately. I've had a lot of things going on. Like uh, Thursday afternoon, I had the most tremendous headache. Um, and then... Yesterday, I went out and was in the wind for a couple of hours, and I was feeling the effects through allergies of that, so I apologize for not being here. I'll try to be more diligent at being here. So I want to read to you today 
what I read this morning in my devotional, my Jesus Always, which I read this every day, and it has it has dates. So I don't know if you can see the date, June twenty sixth. I don't know if you can see it down here or not. I don't know. I'm holding it in front of the camera. I don't know, but anyway, June twenty sixth is the day I'm gonna read. And so I just I'm, this is like my second year to read through this. And it's just like the Bible. The more I read through it, the more I see what Jesus wants for us. So if I am for you, and this is like Jesus is talking. If I am for you, who can be against you? I mean, who can? It is essential for you to grasp that I truly am for you. This is a promise for all of my followers. When things are not going your way and people you trusted turn against you, it's easy to feel as if you as if I've abandoned you. At such times, it is vital to tell yourself the truth. I am not only with you always, I, also, I am also for you all the time. This is true on days when you perform well and on days when you don't. When people treat you well and when they don't. If you really understand and fully believe that I am for you, Jesus is for you, then fear will diminish and you can face your adversity more calmly knowing that I will never turn against you Jesus will never turn against us gives you confidence to persevere in tough times we are all going to go through tough times I approve of you beloved because you are mine we belong to Jesus this is my opinion of you that prevails and will continue to prevail throughout eternity. No person and no thing will be able to separate you from my loving presence. So, you know, that's what Jesus wants you to know today. He already told me this morning, but this is what he wants you to know. That nothing can separate you from his love. His love lasts forever. So if you belong to Jesus, you belong to Jesus forever. You know, He loves you forever. An everlasting love. So let's read Numbers 6. <laughs> Number 6. I'm going to read 24 through 26. And so we'll consider that this is already your blessing. I may not be on here for very long, but I have noticed something. I am not sleepy like I am every other day. I didn't take my medicine. I didn't take my allergy medicine today. Those two things must be making me sleepy. So I'm good. I didn't have to make me any coffee this afternoon. So number 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So God wants to leave us with peace. Jesus, Jesus, one of his things, peace I give to you, peace I leave with you. That's a song out of the promise too. <laughs> I just nearly want to sing it, but I'm not. Okay, so Romans 8, um, starting in, I really like all of Romans 8. It's so hard to just start somewhere. Um, it says 31, but I am going to read more than that. I'm going to start with 10. Romans 8, 10, and then I'm going to read all the way through 39. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. We have nothing to be ashamed of. We are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. We are heirs of God heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We will be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So whatever we're going through, whatever you're going through today, it doesn't compare to the glory that we have coming. That many of my loved ones and friends beat me to heaven. And so they're experiencing that glory every day. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. We do. Our spirits long to be in heaven where they belong. They they belong in heaven. They don't belong in these earthly bodies forever. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he, doth he yet hope for? But if, if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Yes, we have to wait. We have to wait until God's perfect timing to get us out of here. Either we're going to die or we're going to fly out of here with Jesus, one or the other. And that is up to God. That is His timing, not ours. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession, intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, so the Holy Spirit utters the things in our prayers that we don't know to say to God because we're not holy. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So we are all called to some purpose of God. For whom he did foreknow, he knew. He knew we were going to be his children. He knew. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So he, he knows who will accept Jesus and who will not. But we don't. And that's why we have to continue sharing. Because we are called to share the gospel to others. Um, 
to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called so we are called we are called as God's children in whom he called them he also justified in whom he justified them he also glorified what shall we then say to these things if God be for us who can be against us so who can be against us if God is for us he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all give us all things who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect it is God that justifieth who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ who shall who will be able to separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword and as it as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god like nothing can separate us from that love nothing which is in christ jesus our lord so nothing nothing can separate and that's that's why it's going to be all right you know we may be in a valley today we may find ourselves in a valley today we may not know what to do today, but that's okay because we need to just take the hand of Jesus and he will lead us where we need to go. He'll help us in our time of need. He knows that when we're in the valley, we need to be fed. We need to be watered. He knows. He loves his sheep. Okay. So we're going to do the salvation like this tonight. I found this. I really need to cut that right there. That's uneven. But anyway, we're going to do it like this. I found a better salvation prayer. Okay, so God's invitation into his heaven. Have you ever been invited? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent in turn to the one true God. And so here's some scriptures. Scriptures for salvation through Jesus. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. None of us are righteous. None of us are righteous. We all need a Savior. Romans 3.10 For all have sinned. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, Romans 6, 23. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me, John 14, 6. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. So heaven is our reward. If you ask Jesus into your heart, he offers eternal life and that eternal life is in heaven and uh, and John saw the holy city New Jerusalem this picture that I have behind me right there that's a picture of the New Jerusalem 
coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So that is our final destination. Our final destination is heaven. So if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, then repeat this prayer after me, and I will leave a space. I am not going to be on here long. I'm still cooking dinner. Uh, and I'm watching a mini-series on human trafficking, which is making me very angry. I'm going to pray against the perpetrators. So, dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Please give me strength to withstand the temptations in my life. Help me to praise and glorify you daily and help me to grow in my relationship with you daily through Bible study and prayer. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. Like this is the very best decision that you can make for your whole entire life. That hinges your destiny and your eternal um, final destination. So do you read the Bible, start in Matthew, and learn more about Jesus. Learn more about the Savior that you just accepted. And you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. Okay, well, it's kind of weird because I already did the blessing. Because I did the blessing as part of the lesson, which was kind of strange. So I think I'll read Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Because I really like that first two months. Seth came in here and decided to take a little siesta. Okay, so Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. And so to me what that is saying is put the past in the past. Do not live in the past. Do not let your past sins, do not let your past mistakes define your today. Today is a new day. God brings us new mercies and blessings every day. Like every day we get to start fresh. We might have a 
horrible day yesterday. Well, we don't have to live in yesterday. We need to live in today and what God brings us every day. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So God wants to make a way and he wants to do a new thing. So he, he brought us a new day so that we can do a new thing. And I really, this verse just speaks volumes to me. And it's kind of like my favorite verse this year. I need to write it down somewhere so I can memorize it. Okay, well we did salvation. I cleaned off my desk today, so that was another thing that I got done today. And I looked at bills. I, I'm going to have to make a deposit before I can pay them. But I looked at them. I know what's due. So that's just always good to know. Uh, but anyway, God is good and He is our provider and He will provide. I know that. So I have no doubt. And I, know, I have no doubt that if I'm in the valley that I'm still going to be alright in the valley because Jesus is going to be with me. I am not going to be alone. You are not going to be alone in the valley. Just cling to Jesus. Just hold tight to Jesus. Alright, well my friend Josie, do you have any prayer requests? Because I'm, I'm going to get off of here. I'm trying to shorten this lesson because I want to put it on some other platforms. And uh, I just, I have a hard time watching things that are really long so I'm sure other people do too. You have any prayer requests today Josie? What was I going to pray about? Okay well I'm going to go ahead and start. I will pray for Josie and her family and Mr. Mike and the boys too. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, because you are sovereign over everything. You are creator over everything. You created everything we see, everything that we don't see. And you created us too, God. You created us for your special plan and purpose for our lives. You predestinated us to be your children. You called us to be your children, God. And we answer the call through Jesus, your Son, by accepting Him as our Savior, God. We are joint heirs with Jesus in your kingdom, God. And there will be no kingdom like your kingdom, God, because it is perfect in every way. God, we just thank you. And we praise you for your protection, for your provision, God. For your blessings, God. We just thank you. I pray for Josie and Austin, God, as they just grow closer and closer to you every day, God. Please protect them, provide for them, and bless them. We also pray for Josie's sisters and their families, God, and her brothers and their families. We pray for her children and their families, God. We pray for protection and blessings and provision, God. And we pray that if any of them are not saved, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus to be saved. God, we pray for Mr. Mike and all the boys that he takes care of. We, we pray that you would bless Mr. Mike for him taking in boys that otherwise... Um, don't have good Christian homes, God. We just praise you and we just pray that you would bless him, that you would protect him, that you would provide for him the things that him and these boys need. God, we just pray for our youth. We pray that they would just draw closer and closer to you, God, all the time, God. Thank you for the outing to Creation Evidence Museum yesterday and then we took them to big rocks, God, and they, they got to swim in your creation. You created that, God. 
You created what they swam in. You created everything, God, and everything you created is perfect. God, we just pray. We do pray against human trafficking, God. We pray against this slavery, this sick slavery that makes so much money, God. We pray against it. We pray that it would end. We pray that um, the children, the young adults, the teens that are caught up in this, God, we pray that you would provide them a way out, God. That you would make a way in the desert for them, God. You would make a way out. And for all the rescuers, the brave rescuers, that go in and put their lives on the line to rescue these children. God, we just pray. We pray for their safety. And God, we pray for the corruption in this industry to end. We pray for people to be brought to justice for their breaking of the law, for their lawlessness, God, for them not doing what you call us to do, which is to care for others, God. They treat these people like animals, God. I know you see it. I know there is so much more that I don't see that you see, God. And I know there will be a day of reckoning for these people, if not now, later. And I know, God, that if they wanted to give their life to Jesus, that you would forgive them, God, and you would make a new way for them, too. So I pray, God, that they would be convicted of their their sins and their law-breaking, God. God, I just... This whole thing just breaks my heart. This whole thing. But God, you have given me a way to be a very small part of the fight against this. You have brought me to a place where I can put my hands and feet to my prayers, God. You have given me a voice for the voiceless God that you want me to use for your glory that you want me to use to educate others, God. And I am willingly walking through that door for you, for all your glory, not for mine, to maybe help in some small way for there to be one day that this is not, this is not an issue and that people are not making millions of dollars off of selling other people in such disgusting ways. God, that does not reflect on them because they are victims. They are being victimized, God. And you know that. And we know that. But we know that you create new beginnings, God. And there can be a new beginning. And so we just thank you, God. We thank you and we're grateful that even when we are in the valley, God, we are never alone. We are always with Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, I know um, kind of what I'm doing right now is a bit of a downer, but a lot of people are not educated about this subject, and children and parents and grandparents need to be educated because it is so easy for these people to get caught up in this. It is so easy and they're innocent. They don't go into it on purpose. They're just innocent. There's just, we live in an evil and fallen and broken world. And that's how this happens. Because people don't want to follow God's way. They want to go a different way. They want to make money. They don't realize that they're not taking their money with them. Either place that they end up, they're not taking their money with them. It's just not worth it. All right, well, I got to get off of here. Um, I think Seth is ready for dinner. So, God bless you, my friend Josie. I'll see you tomorrow at church. And uh, God bless all of you and your families. Much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.